The Morning Show starts right now with a breaking news alert. Happening in a few minutes, President Biden is signing a bipartisan gun control bill. The bill is the first of its kind in decades and will enhance background checks for those between the age of 18 and 21. But first, we're going to check in with meteorologist Danielle Juliano with a look at what we can expect with weather today because it's been hot all week long. But luckily, we're going to have some more seasonal like temperatures today. Is that right, Danielle? Yes, that is. Yeah, we reached that 100 degree mark on Thursday. It was a bit toasty out there. 81 degrees right now over by Doctors Lake Marina. 87 degrees is what it feels like out there. You're seeing a mix of sun and clouds when you wake up and step outdoors this morning. Calm winds inland, but we are really picking up the breezy conditions along the beach. Jack's Beach, you're looking at winds 15 miles per hour right now, 12 miles per hour at the Craig Airport, 8 miles per hour at the Jacksonville Airport. 82 degrees at Jack's Beach right now, 82 in Arlington, 81 at the Jacksonville Airport, 77 over in Cecil. Moving up to Georgia, Brunswick 81 degrees, Blackshear 80, Homerville 76, Folkestone 78 in Kingsland 77 degrees, 73 in Lake City, 75 in Keystone Heights, Palaka 75 as well, 80 in Palm Coast and 82 in St. Augustine. Temperature trend as we continue throughout the day, we will warm things up into the upper 80s, low 90s. Feel like temperatures a little warmer than that, but we're also going to increase our rain chances ever so slightly. Not all of us are going to see rainfall out there. So coming up in just a few minutes, I'll let you know who is going to see it and how long it's going to last. All right, thank you, Danielle. In a six to three vote, the Supreme Court has overturned Roe versus Wade. The decision reserves nearly 50 years of court president. And it has prompted several protests nationwide. And Karen Kafa looks at how the decision sparked both victory celebrations and outrage. From coast to coast, the Supreme Court's historic ruling on abortion rights sparking a strong and emotional response. On Friday, the conservative Supreme Court majority overturned Roe v. Wade, ending the federal constitutional right to abortions. Abortion rights activists angered at the nearly 50-year reversal taking to the streets from Washington, D.C. to Colorado to California. Abortion bans are illegitimate. Forced motherhood is illegitimate. I'm angry. I'm fired up. The fight is not over. People did this fight 50 years ago. I guess it's our turn to take the fight up again. Meanwhile, anti-abortion activists praising the high court's decision and celebrating the victory. Millions of lives will be saved by this decision. I've been fighting my entire adult life for this day. It is one important victory. The landmark decision expected to have a wide and immediate impact. 26 states have laws indicating they plan to ban abortion, according to the Guttmacher Institute, including 13 that have trigger laws that have already gone into effect or will occur after a set period or after a step taken by a state government entity. We're looking at a moment where we are going to experience a nationwide healthcare crisis as over half the country bans access to abortion care. And as supporters and opponents respond to the ruling, the D.C. Metropolitan Police is ramping up staffing, bracing for potential clashes over the weekend as President Joe Biden asks Americans to keep protests peaceful. No intimidation. Violence is never acceptable. In Washington, I'm Karen Kaifa. And shortly after the ruling, several companies have come out in support of employees. Companies like Bumble, Amazon, Dick Sporting Goods, Tesla, and Lyft say it will cover travel expenses for employees who may need to go elsewhere to get an abortion. For instance, Dick Sporting Goods says it will pay up to $4,000, while TikTok is finalizing updates to its benefit packages <coughs> to provide access. Here's a look at the states that have ban on abortion. Seven states are likely to ban the operations, including Georgia, while 10 states, including Florida, are uncertain if a ban will be put in place. Two people are dead and more than a dozen others were hurt during a mass shooting in Norway. And it happened at an LGBTQ nightclub hours before the city's annual pride parade. Police say the suspect has been arrested and they are working to find a motive. They are also going to assess what measures are needed for today's parade to ensure that it's safe. A witness says they saw a man take a weapon out of a bag before the shooting. And the witness says at first they thought it was an air gun, but once they heard glass shattering, they ran for cover. A Wisconsin court will decide in September on a woman serving time for stabbing a friend. 
Morgan Geyser is serving a 40-year sentence in a mental institution for her role in the so-called slender man stabbing. Now, prosecutors say she and another girl stabbed her friend to win over a fictitious internet character. The victim survived the attack. Now at 20, Geyser appeared in court for the first time since her sentencing. Doctors will review the appeal and determine if she can be released early. Now, Geyser is looking for a similar result as her partner Weir received. Uh, Weir was released on home GPS monitoring last year. An FDA ban on Juul products has been put on hold, and the company is appealing the order, saying it would cause irreparable harm. And this comes a day after stores nationwide were told to take all Juul products off its shelves. The FDA says the company failed to show its products would be appropriate for public health. An appeals court is asking for time to consider the appeal, and the temporary freeze on the order will last through at least July 12th. All right, we're going to take a look live at President Joe Biden, who was signing a gun control bill. Let's listen in. Discussion in our whole household. Do you think is it? Anyway, Jill and I know how painful and devastating uh, the decision is for so many Americans. And I mean so many Americans. The decision is uh, implemented by states. My administration is going to focus on how they administer it and whether or not they violate other laws like deciding to not allow people to cross state lines to get public health services. And uh, we're going to take action to protect women's rights and reproductive health. This morning, though, I'm here, we're here, to, uh, for, on a critical issue, gun violence. Uh, you know, uh, I'm about to see the law, bipartisan safety legislation, gun safety legislation, <clears throat> and time is of the essence. Lives will be saved. When we return from Europe, Jill and I will be hosting an event in the White House on July 11th to mark this historic achievement with members who voted for these families and the families who, in fact, were victimized by the gun shooting that we've seen. This so, so, uh, it's so, so incredible. I've seen so much of it of, of late. And, uh, and advocates have worked really hard to do something about it. I've been at this work for a long, long time, and I know how hard it is, and I know what it takes to get it done. It was there. I was there 30 years ago, the last time this nation passed meaningful gun safety laws. And I'm here today for the most significant law to be passed since then, since for the last 30 years. I'd like to thank the leaders and members of the House and Senate for working together to get this done. I especially want to thank the families, and Jill and I, many of whom we sat with for hours on end across the country. So many we've gotten who lost their souls and the, to an epidemic of gun violence. They lost their child, their husband, their wife. Nothing is going to fill that void in their hearts. But they led the way so other families will not have the experience and the pain and trauma that they had to live through. From Columbine to Sandy Hook to Charleston, Orlando, Las Vegas, Parkland, El Paso, Atlanta, Buffalo, Uvalde, and for the shootings that happen every day in the streets that are mass shootings we don't even hear about the number of people killed every day in the streets. Their message to us was do something. I don't know how many times we heard that? Just do something. For God's sake, just do something. Well, today we did. Well, this bill doesn't do everything I want. It does include actions I've long called for that are going to save lives. It funds crisis intervention, including red flag laws. It keeps guns out of the hands of people who are a danger to themselves and to others. And it finally closes what is known as the boyfriend loophole. So if you assault your boyfriend or girlfriend, you can't buy a gun or own a gun. It requires young people aged 18 to 21 to undergo enhanced background checks. It includes the first ever federal law that makes gun trafficking and straw purchases distinct federal crimes for the first time. It clarifies who needs to register as a federally licensed gun dealer and run background checks before selling a single weapon. You know, this is also provides historic funding to address youth mental health crisis in this country, especially, especially the trauma experienced by the survivors of this gun violence. Look, uh, you know, uh, invest in anti-violence programs at work and work directly with the people who are most likely to commit these crimes and become victims of gun crimes. Today, we say more than enough.
We say more than enough. It's time when it seems impossible to get anything done in Washington. We are doing something consequential. If we can reach compromise on guns, we ought to be able to reach compromise on other critical issues from veterans' health care to cutting-edge American innovation and so much more. I know there's much more work to do, and I'm never going to give up. But this is a monumental day. God bless us with the strength to continue to work to get the work that's left undone done and the lives lost that can't be saved that, that are obviously gone, but will be an inspiration for us to do more. I'm not going to sign this bill into law. We have just heard from President Biden, who just signed the gun control bill. Now, we know the measure aims to strengthen background checks for those between the age of 18 and 21 years old. That's right. And he thanked the House and the Senate for allowing this bill to pass. And he also says that this bill will help with gun control and in the country. And he also says that it will provide um, it will turn gun trafficking into a federal crime. He said that he spoke with families of victims of recent shootings in our country in the past couple of months. So um, it will also help um, encourage states to pass red flag laws as well. So and we will be back with more after the break. <laughs> 